Hey guys, it's Mr. Walker here. Welcome to another math lesson with yours truly. Uh, today we're taking a look at a, at a couple different things. Uh, mainly what we're focusing on today though is representing and, and solving division problems uh, requiring uh, a decomposition or decomposing of a remainder in the tens place. Now I know that sounds like super confusing, right? But basically what we're, what we're going to be doing here is taking a look at division, kind of like the behind the scenes of division and what's going on when we're dividing numbers and um, what happens when we have a number that's in the tens place and we have some numbers left over once we divide. We have those remainders, where those remainders come from, what they mean, okay? Um, so that's kind of the gist of what we're, what we're going to be working on today is basically really understanding where those remainders come from, especially when we're looking at numbers in the tens place, when we're dividing those, those bigger numbers, um, what, those, what those remainders mean, how they get there, and what we do with them, okay? So you're not going to need too, too much today. Just something to write on, something to write with would be great. Um, if you do have a place value uh, chart, place value template, that might be something helpful as well. Uh, they might be back a few lessons if you if you need one of those. I'm just going to sketch mine up here so you can you can do that as well if, if you want to. Um, but once you have those things, once you're ready to start working, just click play, click continue, and uh, we'll keep rocking and rolling through this. All right, guys, so I'm just going to dive right in with a couple of examples, okay? So let's start nice and easy, right? Let's go with some single-digit numbers here. And I have uh, three divided by two, three divided by two. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to model that on my place value chart here. Now, what I've done, just to kind of point out what I have going on over here, I have tens and ones, right, kind of divided down the middle. And here in this bigger space is where I'm going to represent my numbers. And then these are like the groups that I'm dividing it into. So when I'm dividing by two, these are my two groups right here. So I'm going to start up here by representing those three ones. I'm just going to go ahead and put those here. Let's see, one, two, three. There's my three ones, okay? And then I'm going to divide them into two groups. So these are my two groups. So I'm going to divide them into the two groups. Okay, so if I did that, this guy would come down here. This guy would come down here. And then I'm left with this guy, right? I can't evenly distribute him to my uh, last two groups here. So this isn't going to work out. So what this guy becomes is a remainder, right? So my answer would be 1 with a remainder of 1, okay? If we were to do this out um, using long division, right, using our standard algorithm, I would put my 3 in here divided by 2. 2 goes into 3 one time, or I should say I can make one group of 2 from those 3. It will give me 2, subtract, that leave me with 1, and I can't go any further here, so I have a remainder of 1, okay? Makes sense, you guys, with me so far on this? Not super complicated, right? All right, let's let's keep moving forward with this a little bit. Okay, so now I've changed things up a little bit, and instead of three, now we have thirty. Thirty divided by two. So I still have my two groups that I'm dividing it into, but now I'm working with the number thirty. Okay, so I'm going to represent the number thirty here as three tens. One, two, three. So there's my three tens. And I could start putting these in my two groups. I could do one here. I could do one there, but I'm left with one ten. So does this mean I have my answer is two with a remainder of ten? Like how does this work out? What does that mean? Ah, well, it's not going to quite work out that way. What I could actually do instead is I could take this ten over here, and now it becomes ten ones. So now I can divide a little bit further. Okay, so now I took those that 110, when we brought it over to the ones, that made 10 ones. So now I'm going to divide those 10 ones out into my two groups. Let's see, one here, one here, one here, and one here. Perfect, okay, so each group that I have has 110 and five ones in it, which means that my answer would be 15, 15, right? And we know that 30 divided by two, or half of 30 is 15. We already kind of know that using some mental math. Again, though, if I wanted to prove this using our standard algorithm here, we could think of it this way as three tens. I could put one in each of those two groups, which gives me two tens, subtract, leave me one left over here and then I bring down my zero so that'd be ten that's how I left with those ten ones right and I could put those into five groups two times five is ten subtract 
we're left with no remainder. So there's no guys like left over hanging out up here. Okay, we're good to go there. So that's kind of how we can tie it back to the standard algorithm a bit. So we're able to kind of model breaking down those tens into ones to be able to keep dividing, right? To keep going through. We can't be left with a remainder of 10. We can't really ever be left with a remainder that's bigger than the number that we're dividing by. So when that happens, that's why we have to kind of break it down to keep going to the next step, okay? Let's take a look at another example, see if we can uh, bring this all home a bit. All right, so starting out nice and easy again, we have four divided by three. So I don't have any tens, but I do have four ones. One, two, three, four. Four ones, right? And I'm dividing them into three groups. One, two, let me go ahead and add another group because I'm dividing by three on this one. So I have one, two, three groups. I'm dividing them into three groups, okay? So let's take those four ones and let's divide them into those three groups. So I would have one here, one here, one here, and then this guy is not going to fit anywhere and make it even, so he's going to be my remainder. Again, if we were to take a look at that up here using our standard algorithm, four into groups, into three groups, each group is going to have one, each group is going to have one, three times one is three. Subtract that out, that leaves us with one left over. Because that remainder is smaller than the number that I'm actually dividing by, I can't break it down, I can't go any further, I can't decompose it, so that's just going to be a remainder, one remainder of one. Okay, so that's going to be my answer there. So that was easy enough. Let's go a little bit further with this. See if I challenge ourselves a little bit, and here we have 42 divided by 3. So now we're working in some tens, 42 divided by 3. So if I was going to represent this with my tens and my ones, I would have to do four tens. One, two, three, four tens, two ones, one, two. It's easy enough. And again, here I'm going to have to draw in another group because I'm dividing it by three. One, two, three groups, right? Okay, so I'm going to take those four tens, divide them into three groups, one here, one here, one here, which means we have a 10 left over. So is that it? Is it just three remainder of 10 or one remainder of 10? No, right, I can't do that. I've got to take this 10, I'm gonna move it over here to my ones. When it crosses that line into my ones, it's gonna break into 10 tens. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so there's my 10 ones now, and I had two ones over here already, so now I have a total of 12. And I have to divide those 12 into these three groups, so let's go ahead and do that. One here. And would you look at that? I have each group has one, two, three, four, five, but this would be one, ten, ten, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen should be my answer. So let's go ahead and just work it out over here just to check our work. Okay, 42 divided by 3. So if I take that 4, and I divide it into three groups, there will be one ten in each group. Three times one is three. Subtract that out. you left with one ten. And then those two ones, when I brought that one ten over, it turned into ten ones plus the two ones I already had, which gave me a total of twelve. If I take that twelve and put it into groups of three, each group is going to have four in it. 3 times 4 is 12, so I used up all 12 of those, and I had nothing left over. My remainder was gone. So we're going to go there. So you can see how we can decompose, again, the tens. When we had that one ten left over, right? We had that one ten left over. The one ten left over, we brought it over as a 1, split it into 10 ones, and then we were able to divide further from there. We didn't just stop there. We kept going, right? Awesome, guys. So hopefully this helps give you guys some examples, kind of see what it means to actually take that 10 and, and decompose it so we can keep dividing through that number and then what it means if we do have a remainder left over. Um, if you guys have any other questions, comments, or concerns with this, please let me know. Um, but I think you guys are doing really well as far as your division goes. Uh, you can use a model like this. You can use your standard algorithm to check your work, whatever makes you uh, feel more comfortable, whatever helps you to better understand the situation that we're working with here. So um, I appreciate you guys' hard work. Keep it up. Let me know if you need anything, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.